Hello everyone and welcome to Money and Prosperity and this is episode two. Today I am speaking to Prosper Taravinga and Prosper was born in Zimbabwe and now lives in Melbourne, Australia with his wife Angela and daughter Kalia. A diehard about personal development, lifestyle design and entrepreneurship, Prosper is a lifetime student of constantly striving to become the best man he can be and help others along the way. He's inspiring others to achieve a happy, a happier existence through writing and podcasts of his website and the digital marketing agency livelongdigital.com.au. He believes everyone has a chance. Yours is around the corner if you allow yourself to grab it. Prosper, I love that. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on your show right there. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. And if I could take a step back, your business is not livelongdigital.com.au. That's the website of your business. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So so the name of the business is Live Long Digital. Um, It was a Mm -hmm. long thought thought about that because my first name is Prosper. And um, for a lot of Star Star Trek fans, you would have heard um, Sir Leonard Nimoy saying "Live long and prosper." So that's where oh. that's where the whole name came from. <laughs> wow! And prosper, your your name is really prosper, isn't it? Absolutely, I've yes, got adventurous you, parents. You were born prosper. Wow! Wow! And so, just on a quick side note, do you have you've got any siblings? Yes, I've got a sister who's living in South Africa at the moment. And um, yeah, that's just about it. So it's just me and my little sister. And what's her name? Her name is Proline. They didn't go that far with her. It no, was just, no. But they no. took the whole pro in, 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 the, in the first part of our names. Yes, yes. Wow, wow. So, Prosper, thank you so much for coming on to Money and Prosperity. Very apt to have you on the second series or second episode. So, tell me about your business. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on here. I'd, I'd like to say I viscerally believe that, that if anyone is working on an online uh, platform or a website or trying to create a fortune for themselves, they should be profitable and they should actually enjoy um, doing whatever they do. So I help coaches, consultants, um, service professionals, um, and also real estate agents to actually brand themselves and market their services so that they have a business that they can profit from and they can actually enjoy. Mm, okay, interesting. So um, do you and, and are you do you niche particularly with real estate agents or is this something that you've just started to do? Absolutely. So I can help each and every business that really needs to step up their game. Um, Because what I mainly do is help people build systems so that the business operates on autopilot. Now Mm -hmm. I have found out that real estate agents are a lot of people that might need some of my services because they are out there trying to sell properties or get the properties rented. But in the, in the meantime, they need to have uh, systems that are bringing customers to them. So this is where I will be helping them to actually curate and create online footprints that optimizes their businesses for growth and um, basically generating leads for them. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love that term online footprint. That's great. That's great. Cause then it gives me this idea that they're actually making a um, making an impression that's left there rather than just fleeting by. Well, absolutely. What mm. they do <clears throat> mainly as real estate agents or anyone who's running a business <laughs> is um, you are working on people's hopes and dreams. Mm. Okay. So let's put, for example, your business is to deal with finances. People are there trying to uh, look after their families and make sure that their families are well provided for. So if you don't do your part or if you don't show up for them, um, then that means you're letting them down, which means if your online presence is not there, there's a lot of people that would definitely depend on you being there so that they can actually, um, you know, get the finances they want and have a happier existence. So yeah, it is a a footprint that needs to be um, looked into. Yes, yes. So Prosper, looking, you know, with your business and and, and your journey, because I can imagine that, you know, coming from Zimbabwe, you you 
you, you, did you come with your family or did you come by yourself? I, I always say that I came to Australia with a backpack full of hopes and dreams. Um, yeah. it, it is actually <laughs> seven years in three days that I've actually landed in Australia. <gasps> Only seven yeah. years. Yes. Yeah, so I came, I came here when I was 28. Yes. Um, that was in 2011. Mm -hmm. Is that seven years or eight? Seven. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. seven, eight years, yeah. Yeah, so 20, um, in 2011, that's when I landed in Australia. Basically, I knew no one and I knew nothing. And um, yeah, it, it, it hasn't been easy. When you get to a place where um, you've never called home, you're learning, first of all, the systems, you're learning the financial systems. I went into debt because I did not realize, um, you know, loans and credit cards and all that stuff and some of that mm -hmm. debt was crippling me up until recently so mm -hmm. you know what I mean it, it, it wouldn't have been easy coming in from a place where we had nothing to a place where it's all abundant but you have to be careful how you spend yes exactly exactly and is that because you know coming you know Credit is so easy to get in Australia and, and maybe not so much now, but I'm assuming when you came out here, banks were just throwing credit cards and and loans and mortgages and everything else. Did you find that, that it was so easy to actually get money? It still is if you know how to do it and if you're not smart enough. First of all, it's it, it doesn't necessarily have to be um it doesn't necessarily have to be your credit cards. Your, whatever you, you purchase, they're making it easy for you to buy. You know, the mm. next day pay loans or phones, especially. You know what I mean? Yes. Like right about now, all communication can actually be for free, but telecommunication companies are still billing people. You know what I mean? You can, we're talking right now mm. for free and there's no need for you to actually have a phone number. That's what we're all paying for. So when you come into a country, you want to keep connected to everybody else back home, I mean, obviously a couple of selfies here and there. And the only way you can connect with other people is by maybe going out um, and, and, and <clears throat> joining other people that already have, um, you know, established places of work or of staying, but you want to keep up with, with those people because you think they're your friends. So you get yourself into phone credit um, debt, you get yourself into credit card debt. Um, and what I also did was um, some shops, allow you to get, um, you know, clothes and then you can pay, pay later, but then that's yes. triple the price. So yes. all of that stuff, um, it adds up. It, mm. it doesn't sound like it's a lot when you start, but it does add up. And especially if you don't understand the financial cycles and the financial systems and how interest is worked upon um, and what they normally say that if you uh, don't understand compounding, it's being used against you. So that's exactly what normally happens to a lot of people that are not financially literate. Yes, yes. So what did you do on a daily basis in order to actually, because I, I know that, you know, you run a very successful business now and you've been very successful with your investments as well. So what did you do on a daily basis to grow yourself and actually start making money and creating your business so you could get to where you are now? Absolutely. So <clears throat> I would, I would really maybe bring it back a little bit uh, so that I can really integrate uh, with everybody watching right now. So um, as soon as I got to Australia, I started working um, in a restaurant and that restaurant um, also gave me extra duties to wash the dishes at the back. And once I was given that opportunity, I also saw an opportunity that um, they did not have an online footprint or Facebook that represented them as a company. So I helped them mm -hmm. to do that. Long story short, that's how I actually started um, with my side um, hustle by mm -hmm. creating mm -hmm. Facebook pages for restaurants uh, on Ligon Street. All right. Oh, really? And then, wow. Yeah. And while, while I was doing that, I was also just working with uh, companies like Census, um, you know, really paying the bills. And I came to a point where I realized that whatever I'm doing, I'm actually earning more in terms of the hours that I'm working in comparison in my other business. And then I just started working on that. Now mm. I realized I had to actually become a totally different person in order for me to achieve the goals that I wanted to achieve. Right. And that's why you see mm. behind me, 
these extensive amounts of books from wall to wall mm -hmm. that I've been reading myself in order to um, be, do and have the life that I, I want to live. Because at school, you're never taught financial education. You are only taught how to survive and how not to hurt other people. You're not taught how to actually make the money and how to uh, be maybe amongst the 1% or the people that can actually create a living for themselves. So what I do every single day, basically, it's, it's, it's a routine that actually annoys even my friends. I want in the 24 hours that I leave or exist every single day that I read at least four of them. Oh, wow. Yes. Right. So I read at least four hours a day, yes. um, but it's not four hours straight. It, it's done in 30 minute um, intervals. Yes. So if I start off in the morning, maybe I have a 30 minute um, read none disturbed and then i book my calls and then whatever call is booked i do that call and then read that 30 and i jot it all down um in my um in my diary so mm -hmm. i've got daily goals and um predominantly not hourly goals but just daily goals of things that i have to do and everything that i've done i tick it off all right um mm -hmm. you know on this list here it's like you can buy this book on um you know in the bookshelves the it's just a diary you write down everything that you need done throughout the whole day and then make sure that every time you do it, you tick it off. Even if you don't accomplish a lot, but looking at it, um, you know, in retrospect, when you journaling at the end of your day, you have an understanding of what needs to be done tomorrow so that you start off on a fresh mind and it's not all muddled. So, yes. yeah, there's, there's quite a lot of personal development that goes into it and um, just having a bit of discipline of knowing exactly where you want to go and then mm -hmm. just navigating it back um, to yourself. So it's, yes. those are my sort of day practices. Yeah. Wow. So you had a vision and then you put a plan in place and right. you're very um, methodical about doing what you have to do. Absolutely. So, so do you have days where you just don't feel like doing it? Like what, 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 what motivates you to keep on doing, doing it day after day? <clears throat> Absolutely. You see, <clears throat> the thing is I used to have a few motivations. I used to be motivated by my mortgage debt, but now that I've, you know, gone past that, I'm now motivated by an even, an even bigger why. You see, like I said, I came in from Zimbabwe and we mm. are, culturally um, have to look after or look into the future, especially protecting the name, all right? So as soon as I came to Australia, I cut off the lineage in Zimbabwe. Now, here in Australia, I'm the first Tarovinga, all right? And in this day and age, we are the most documented generation. Now, I don't want, when I'm 92, that my great grandkids are looking back and saying, what have you done or what did you do or who, where did we come from? All right. Mm. I wanted to have been a great foundation for them, um, you know, so that they would also know that, you know, whoever came or however they came from their strong family. Do you know what I mean? So the onus is on me to set that foundation as I'm their founding father. So that's really what motivates me uh, wow. to keep working. It's, it's no longer about me. It's way past my daughter now um, because my daughter is, is set in the way that we've done stuff for her. Um, yeah, it's now just really for maintaining the name um, in Australia. Wow, that is so powerful, Prosper. That is, that, that's so powerful. It puts, it, it puts things in, in perspective, doesn't it? Well, absolutely, yeah. Mm. I, I just don't want that they look back because there's always Ancestry.com and then, you know, you don't mm, want to mm, mm. have your grand granddad having been a, a, a nobody, you know, when other people were doing great things, you know. Mm, so, mm, and I mm. want that the name opens doors for them in the future. Yes. Um, so, Yes. Yeah. Wow. So, so what has been some of the biggest challenges to getting to where you are now and what did you do? Like, what could you suggest that worked best for you to help overcome them? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> the biggest, biggest challenges is falling for all the internet. Um, let's do this and 
have these five steps and um, you will get X result. I want you to look at my fingers right now. Not every finger is the same height, all right? And not everyone is going to get the same results. I spent far too much going into rabbit holes with courses. We would have met at different <laughs> occasions doing mm-hmm, all mm-hmm. these courses. And it spent, mm-hmm. it took away a lot of my time, money, and effort up until I realized that there's only three things that you really need uh, to know in life. And once you've got those three things down packed, um, everything else will be set out for you. Mm-hmm. We're here to live. We're here to learn and we're here to contribute. All right. So all the other things are just smoke and smoke and mirrors. If you live the life you absolutely want to live, all right, and then you learn all the things that will get you to that life that you want to live, all that's left for you to live a fulfilling life is to contribute to others. Mm. All right. So mm. in between, you now need to figure out as a person. What things am I doing today that constitute that I'm actually living a, a happier existence? What things am I doing that constitute that I'm learning, which is my four hours a day of reading mm-hmm. something fresh and new? And mm-hmm. what am I contributing? We're sitting here and I'm contributing my time, which is the same thing that you're doing. And I speak to oodles amounts of people, um, you know, in and out there that are looking to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Once you've got your values down packed, um, a lot of things would um, come in place. So the one thing that happened to me was I spent a lot of money following people values, not following my own values. And mm. the more I did that, the more I found out that I was failing in everything else because those things were not designed for me. Mm. So um, do you think that it's because we all have our own, um, our own gifts and our own skills and some of us will excel in different areas more so than others and there are a lot of people out there that are excelling in their particular area but that's because that's their niche and that's what they're good at and that doesn't necessarily Absolutely. mean that if we follow their formula as such that we'll achieve the results they achieve. So it's finding our own formula and you have beautifully simplified that down as to being something that's very grounding and, and very simple, but very easy, simple, powerful and makes sense. Absolutely. Because yeah. everybody else is, is trying to become something mm. and what has worked for them is not necessarily going to be the same thing that's going to work for me. Yes. Yes. So what does prosperity mean to you? Prosperity means living within your, your values. Ah. If you have found out who you're supposed to be mm-hmm. and you actually leave that, I, I, I promise you the world will take notice. Your, 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 even your own existence is, is, is something else that nobody can actually define. And I think that's prosperity because a lot of people are leaving other people's lives disguised as their own. Either they don't realize, but maybe you went on and became a doctor just because your dad wanted you to be a doctor, but you can't stand blood. And, and, and some people went on to become a, a pilot just because they wanted to prove Auntie Mary wrong and Auntie Mary has since died. Now you can't undo what you've done because you feel like you've wasted a lot of time. Prosperity is living within your own, even if you're working for somebody, no matter where you are in life, if you're living within your values Mm -hmm. and you're happy with your own existence, I believe you're, you're prosperous. It's not Mm -hmm. monetary or it's not because money, money really doesn't take you anywhere. It's not, um, emotional because you can change friends you can change um exist uh, you know people that causes those emotions to 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 uh, make it uh, you know sort of bother you in life mm-hmm. if you're living in, in 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 a space where you look at yourself in the mirror and you smile and you're like god this guy is handsome then <laughs> i think i think a lot of people can't say that you know <laughs> Uh, yes, that's yes. I know, I know. And it's interesting. I was um I was just recording something with um a colleague of mine, a new in- interview series that we started today, and we were talking about the imposter syndrome. 
And that's where, Absolutely. you know, living as we feel that we should be living because we were told that if we become that person, then we will be more accepted and loved. Today is a specific example of imposter syndrome. If I wasn't true, if I wasn't the person I have now become, I probably wouldn't be showing face because I've cut my hair. And I would have aligned myself with that image of that was yes. the prosper people knew, you know? Yes, yes. You, you understand? Yes. But it, it's, it's not, I could have cut off a limb or I could have come in without an ear, but I'm still the same person. Yes, you, you, yeah. you, yes, but you, you are, but you're very different because when I last spoke to you, you had dreadlocks and a suit. And that wasn't too long ago. Like that was that was that wasn't all that long ago. And it's like this this complete transformation. But you're still you're still the same person. Absolutely. You see, yeah. half of the time society wants to mold you into this kind of person that you're meant to be. Mm. And if that person doesn't really work, you know, in unison to who you are, like you're talking about suits. Most of the suits that I wear were tailor made. But as soon as we came back from the holiday, I gained a bit of weight. Now they're all useless, mm, you know? Mm. So am I not going to show up to people and be of service just because my suits don't fit anymore? Mm, so mm. don't be defined by what, um, you know, little cocoon you've been placed in or you've put yourself in. Be who you are and, and be self-expressive in a way that other people will stop and take note. And yes. once people take note of what you're doing, people will support whatever you're putting out there. But if you're yes. just a me too person yes. who is just standing in for, yeah, I'm just like the rest of them, then what, what, what good are you to anybody else who's going to need maybe what you've got to offer? Yes, yes, that's it, that's it. And maybe people make promises and they don't deliver because they make promises based on who they think they should be and who what they think they should deliver and then they can't deliver that because they have this fear around it's not me, I'm not good enough, um, that's not my area of genius yet I've sold people on it. But if you, if you work from your heart and if you work from what you're meant to be giving your gifts you're meant to be giving the world then it just it just comes out and you're able to achieve amazing things yeah Absolutely. yeah I've got, I've got this statement that a lot of mm -hmm. business owners they they don't literally marry their brand or they don't marry their business they hook up with their business for the weekend or during business hours and after that they become um, a, a different person not only does that stress you as a person, it will actually make you misaligned with some of the things that you promised, like you've mentioned. So mm. it's, it's really important that people really take note of what their values are, who they want to become, and just work hard to become that person because you have to become that. You just don't put a title to um, your, yourself. You, you have to become that person. And, yes. And, Yes, you do. You do. And because of the internet, it's, it's very easy. People all over the world can know who you are. Whereas 50 years ago, yes, that's it. That's it. And I think some of the most successful people are people who are, they are who they are. It's just, this is who they are. They, 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 they show their vulnerability. They show, you know, they, they don't come out and say that, you know, I've done amazing things and it, it was so easy to do and, and you can do it too. Uh, it, they've, they've, they've shown people that, okay, they've come, from, you know, similar to you, that they've, they've, they've come from a place where they weren't given everything. They had to rely on themselves. They had to start from the beginning, but they were able to achieve. And Absolutely. Yeah, and talking about achieving, you've had some, like, you've got some pretty impressive awards here. So I can see Entrepreneur of the Year for 2016 for Africans in Australia. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, that was uh, 2016, way before I've even uh, started to do great things. Yeah. I would actually want to say, I mean, obviously, all those achievements are just based on the work that I've been doing with the um, uh, African Australian business. Australia Zimbabwe Business Council. 
mm-hmm. um, helping them out, really set up. And even though the economy in Zimbabwe has been uh, so haphazard or whatever, we've managed to actually uh, create strategic partnerships and relationships within um, Australia and Zimbabwe. And um, a few businesses have started up. But one of the, the biggest um, achievements that I would want to maybe really put out that I've just really thought about now is um, I helped an Australian lady who was a chef um, start her own chutney business. She never thought she could be able to do that. And then um, in order for her to reach out to as many people, we suggested that she writes a book and then she dedicated that book to me. So I've seen a lot of people in our space that have, all these testimonials, but um, I can just quickly um, show. So she mm-hmm. named the book Fusion Safari. Oh, wow. We, yeah, so Safari as in, um, I'm, I'm African, right? And, um, and her name is Megan. So she went on and created these four oh. flavors of chutney. And the best part is... Oh, wow. Wow. Absolutely. So if you help enough people get what they want, you will in turn, um, you know, receive and get what you want to. Yes, yes, it's true. It's true. And it, it's um, it's interesting as, as you're talking, I'm thinking of, you know, when a lot of people network, they all talk about themselves and this is what I do. This is what I do. How can you help me? How can you help me? Whereas I learned quite a while ago that the key of networking is how can I help you? Absolutely. What's in it for the next person? Exactly. Exactly. I know. I know. Yeah. Wow. And also rising entrepreneur of the year for the city city of Whittlesea for 2017. Absolutely. So every third, every third Monday, Mm -hmm. uh, so which maybe once, once a month, I speak to, um, ladies that are stay at home moms within the Whittlesea uh, area so that I can help them start scale and grow. Most of them are into candle making. Most of them are into all these small home um, businesses that they're starting up. And yeah, the council recognized me for, for that award. So wow. that, was, that was pretty much, yeah. Wow. And you've also just been nominated for the social media marketer of the year. That's for my last year um, back-to-back videos that I was doing, the 30-minute videos that I was doing on, 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 on Facebook. Um, really? As they say, nobody has been able to be consistent like that um, for, for the time that I did. So I was doing every, a video for 30 minutes every day at 2 p.m. AEST without a fail, unless something drastic has happened. And I did that for the whole of last year. You did that for every day? For every single day. Including Saturdays and Sundays? Oh, no, no. Monday, Monday, Monday through to Friday. Monday and through to Friday. Saturday and Sunday I, it was family time. Wow. So, Prosper, what I'm, I'm getting from you is that anything's possible with a vision, with a plan, and with strategic execution done consistently. Absolutely. Because the one thing is that we live in a world full of distractions. Yes. And every time somebody calls you or somebody sends you an email, it's usually their own agenda. Now, if you don't want to participate, you're not forced. All right. But we tend to want to participate because it, it, you know, it makes, it gives us an impression of being busy. But if you do like I do, write down everything that you're meant to be doing that particular day. And if you've got specific things that you're supposed to be doing each and every day, when you go home and you don't have a tick on the things that you are meant to be doing, then you know you haven't done your best. Mm. All right? There's so much time throughout the day that we waste doing all these (laughs) other things. All right? I might look like I'm always, I might look like I'm always on social media, but I'll explain to you how I do it. I use what's called the Pomodoro uh, methodology. So every 25 minutes, exactly. So every 30 minutes is dedicated to pure work. 
but you can only concentrate for 25 minutes. So every 25 minutes, I put it, I, I, I dedicate that to a task that I'm supposed to be completing. And then to reward myself, I go on Facebook or Twitter or on LinkedIn. All right. So it might look like I am sitting on my phone 24 seven. No, I've got work. I'm rewarding myself. So for me, it's not a vocation. It's a reward, mm. you know? Mm. So it's, it's a whole different game, game ball to, to looking at it. Yes. Yes. Okay. So a lot of people do business on social media. Now, and what I find is that if you, sometimes it's like the 80-20 principle, but it's the other way around, that you've got to spend 80% of the time on social media getting to getting in the groups and conversations. So then when you want to put something out there yourself, you've already established a, a no like, and trust relationship with people. Now, that can, waste, that can waste a lot of time. So how do, you, how do you manage that? All right, so I'm going to give you specifics that you should not try at home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Warning. So, right. So, so naturally, um, if you really, really would look, I'm not involved in a lot of groups, all right, because mm-hmm. of that um, thing, it takes a lot of your time. But mm-hmm. if you set up like I did, set up your Facebook in such a way that it communicates what you do, who you do it for and how you can help people. Yes. We know that your, maybe your private profile is, 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 is put out in a way that, um, you know, it's, it's just private for you. But nowadays the, the, the line has been blurred quite Mm, a lot. mm, Right. mm. So if you have your website on there, if you have your, um, strategic things that show what you can do for other people. Every time you, you show up in a group, you don't have to necessarily participate. Maybe a like or a comment or just maybe a, a view. Some people look at who has viewed those things. And if your profile is set up in a way that it already sells who you are, there's no need for you to keep going on and on and on about um, what it is that you do. So if you've got a profile that's set up, Um, as you know, a picture of your kids and then you've got a vague statement there, people are not going to understand why they need to be in touch with you. Mm -hmm. But if you go Mm -hmm. onto my profile, um, everything that I do is put in separate albums. I've got a family album that is featured on the wall. I've got testimonials from people. I've got, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, quotes that I put out there and then there's a statement that you're allowed as your status. That's a permanent one. So you could say, I miss money penny and I can help you with your finances. Mm -hmm. All right. And then just be the person that you say you are, because Mm -hmm. the, the reason why a lot of people want to participate to get known and everything else is because they're not, their profile is not working for them. So get your profile to do the, the, the walking, all you got to do is just show up maybe once in a while comment, and then people would be intrigued by that comment. When mm. they go to your profile, they're already told off who you are and how you can be of help. That's great. Prosper. That's fantastic. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So wow. you don't have to spend hours and hours trying to prove who you are. It's yes. simply set it up in a way that people can see when, when, when you comment. Yes. And that's the reason why some people comment, funny things after they've looked at your profile, then they don't see any substance and then they discredit you automatically, you know? Mm. And that's, that's, that's then causes all the drama on Facebook. But if you've got it set up so well that somebody looks at your comment and they're like, let me check this person out. And they're like, Oh, okay. All right. They should know what they're talking about. Yes. And then if you've got things set up that would bring them into your world, maybe your website, all those things, um, it would basically help. Um, yeah, I was mm. going to quickly show you what I'm talking about just mm-hmm. so that some people have no clue how this works. That, um, yeah, so I don't know if you can see this first part of your, um, your, your profile gives you um, featured photos that would automatically establish you. Yes. And then you've got an opportunity to put your... Um, websites there yes yes all right and then you've got then an opportunity to yeah 
So some people just end on, on the part that, you know, there's so many things that you can include onto your profile so that when you're in groups, everything that you post or everything that you, you put on there, you don't need to prove yourself all the time. Let your profile do the walking. Yes. Wow. So Prosper, if people are wanting to, um, to work with you and actually start tweaking their, their Facebook and their LinkedIn, because I know you help people with LinkedIn as well, what's the, what's the best way they can help, they can get hold of you? And also if they want oh. to establish their footprint. <laughs> Great stuff. So I think I'm the only Prosper within a mile of wherever you are right now, if you're listening to this, mm -hmm. um, a simple Google check of Prosper uh, Melbourne or Prosper Live Long Digital or Prosper Digital Marketer, uh, all of those would lead you straight to my website. But mm -hmm. I have an open Facebook profile that you can jump onto. I've got an open LinkedIn profile that you can also look me up on. Every one of my profiles looks the same, so you won't miss me uh, from a mile shot. It's just that consistency that... You don't want people um, getting lost, but um, I will. I think you're going to be putting the uh, details in the bottom there. Yes, I will. I will. Give you, yes, I will give you a link that has all the links um, that that you might choose to. Or you can go on YouTube. We've got over a thousand videos that if you watch them all, you will spend four days watching um, without leaving your house. So. Wow. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. That's great. It has been so good chatting to you, Prosper. And we've been meaning to do this forever, haven't we? Absolutely. Well, maybe we were waiting for the right time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I know. I know. So before I go, really quick question. Are you, have you got the dreadlocks on your profile picture or have you got a new profile picture? Oh, okay. So on the weekend, I'm actually doing a real brand overhaul. Ooh. I'm getting photos taken. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. But the way, I was, the way I was wearing my dreadlocks, if you really look at it, it just looks like I've got a bigger afro. It takes a while for people to understand, uh, to have noticed that the hair comes behind me because I was always tying it back. Yes. So yes. not a lot of people would notice if, because all my, my photos are like this. So there hasn't been that much change. I've just gotten a bit handsome, but um, <laughs> that's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be if you're positive and glowing. And, 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 yeah, oh, you no. <laughs> oh, look, it's been so great chatting to you, Prosper, and I wish you. You know, I don't even think I have to wish you any big, any more luck because you, you're amazing with what you do and um, and it has been great having you on Money and Prosperity. Absolutely. If you want me back on again, just, you, <laughs> just say the words because there's quite a lot that can be um, discussed. Sometimes mm -hmm. some people just want to hear it from somebody else so that it makes sense for them. But like I said, there's only three things you've got to really look out for in life. You're here to live, you're here to learn and here to contribute. And the reason why once you have learned all your learning, all, all that's left is for you to contribute. And the more you contribute, or the more you give, the more fulfilled you become. And mm. um, I, I just live by those principles. So I'm more than happy to contribute whenever I'm needed. Thank you, Prosper. I will remember that. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you so much for your time. You're welcome. Thank you. What is it? Live, live long. Live long. I can't do the thing. <laughs> I, can't, I, can't even, I can't even get that right. Oh, yeah. I've, I've, I've had so much practice. So it's, it's, <laughs> I've been trying to teach my little girl as well, but uh, uh, yeah. She, yeah. I'm sure she'll nail it. I'm sure. Oh, well, thank you very much, everyone else, for tuning in to Money and Prosperity. And, um, and we'll see you all next episode. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you, thank you.